Hi, I'm Dr. Sridhar. Welcome to my channel. Uh, in this short video, I'll uh, cover a very important topic, which is management of air leak. My aim is not to cover air leaks as a lecture, but just focus on the management part. So, uh, an air leak is potentially life-threatening. Even if the baby is asymptomatic, they need close monitoring. And uh, minimal support with non-invasive ventilation is all right if they have recessions, if they need oxygen. As we have discussed before, uh, you may need to keep the lung open and atelectasis will cause the baby to worsen. So, but don't use higher uh, flows or uh, CPAP pressure than is essential. Uh, giving higher oxygen is not shown to be necessarily useful and recent studies have shown the old practice of giving 100% oxygen is not recommended anymore, even in term babies. Hyperoxia is not good for term babies as well, so don't go for that. If the air leak is causing respiratory symptoms, consider needling uh, or catheter drainage and monitor. If the air leak recurs or if it worsens, we need chest drain insertion. So uh, if a baby is on invasive ventilation and you diagnose an hemothorax, the same pro procedure, the same pathway may apply, but these babies are more likely to need uh, chest drain because uh, they are on positive pressure ventilation. Routine intubation is not essential if a baby is suitable for non-invasive ventilation. So again, this is a old concept that if you had an hemothorax having respiratory support, you need to intubate the baby, but we don't intubate most babies and NAV is okay, but watch these babies carefully, be prepared to intubate and intervene. Many times in a post-operative case after diaphragmatic hernia, you have uh, air leak like uh, chest x-ray picture on the left side. This doesn't need a chest drain, uh, so please discuss with your surgeon if you see such picture. Uh, so this is an example of a spontaneous pneumothorax on the right side. Uh, many times in babies we have uh, pneumothorax shadow anteriorly, so you may need to uh, change the contrast uh, to see it better. Um, most of these babies don't need uh, treatment, but uh, monitor them closely. If they are stable for 24 hours, you can transfer them to the mother. Consider a repeat x-ray if you are worried. Uh, pneumomediastinum, obviously you have uh, air in the mediastinal area and you may have the sail sign as you can see here the thymus is lifted up but there is no air under the uh, heart shadow uh, in this case there is a pericardium where there is air under the heart shadow so these uh, uh, have to be monitored pneumomediastinum doesn't need any treatment except monitoring well a pericardium might need uh, needle, needle drainage if the baby is hypotensive so better to call someone experienced to do the drainage Pulmonary interstitial emphysema happens more in the premature babies where uh, the lung is stiff, uh, especially if there is no antenatal steroids. So remember to uh, reduce the ventilatory support as possible in the early stages. Give surfactant in a timely basis to avoid the PAE happen. But if PAE happens and it's unilateral especially, it may be quite challenging to manage. And uh, you may need to nurse the baby with the PAE side down. Unilateral intubation can be tried. These are very challenging cases, but antenatal steroids uh, coverage should be better and ventilation should be gentle from the start, timely surfactant, these may avoid this happening. But again, volume guarantee ventilation weans the pressure quickly uh, after the surfactant, so that helps as well. Uh, tension pneumothorax is dangerous because it causes hypotension, severe desaturation, metabolic acidosis and the whole vicious cycle. Baby can collapse and we may lose babies as well. And sometimes the tension pneumothorax can spread into a pneumopericardium. So it can be uni or bilateral and we note an acute collapse in blood pressure, uh, deterioration with rise in ventilatory requirements. It's a medical emergency, so you can uh, do a cold light and treat without x-ray if there will be a delay. Uh, needling or catheter drainage as a first step with immediate chest drain is important. Intubation and ventilation, if not already ventilated, is important as well. And high frequency ventilation or high frequency jet ventilation can be considered in these cases. So all of you would be familiar with facing a baby with tension pneumothorax. It's a very scary situation. And uh, cold light, as you can see here, it transilluminates the whole of the chest. Uh, remember that the room needs to be fully darkened. And in a very premature baby, it may not be as reliable because both sides may appear to be translucent. However, if you have mediastinal shift, the heart sounds are shifted, the baby is uh, suddenly worsening you would need to consider uh, tension pneumothorax and needling while waiting for the x-ray can be appropriate in a resuscitation scenario if the baby has suddenly collapsed. And uh, obviously this is a typical x-ray that you might get. The mediastinum is fully shifted, the uh, lung is collapsed and uh, there is significant clinical deterioration. 
So uh, needle thoracocentesis is something that any pediatrician who looks after babies, not only a neonatologist should be familiar with because it's a life-saving scenario, especially in a resuscitation uh, environment, in the labor room even. Um, some of us might have used uh, scalp vein sets. Uh, you can use a scalp vein needle if you don't have access to the appropriate sized Benflon, but uh, please don't leave the scalp vein needle in after the air is drained. The advantage of the cannulas or Benflons is that because the needle will be removed, it's only the soft cannula that's staying in the chest. Uh, there is no risk of lung tear if the needle stays in after the pneumothorax is drained. So please uh, keep in mind that if your team is using a scalp vein set, make sure everyone understands that you shouldn't leave the needle in after the air is drained. You have to pull it out at the same time. Uh, we have uh, different sizes. So you have the 22 gauge, which is a blue vein flon, the 20 gauge, the pink one, and the 18 gauge, the green one. According to the size of the baby and the extent to which the pneumothorax is significant, you can use any of these. We have these uh, stopcock uh, connectors, connectors which have a stopcock at the end, which will be very helpful to drain. So uh, this will connect to the Venflon uh, after you remove the needle out. And uh, the stopcock will help you drain the air out. So uh, you don't need underwater seal because the moment you put the needle in, uh, the air gushes out and by the time uh, you can secure the three bit tap and uh, aspirate with a syringe. So uh, anatomically we can either use the uh, mid clavicular line uh, in the second intercostal space or the mid axillary line in the anterior, in, uh, sorry, anterior uh, axillary line in the fourth intercostal space. Normally for the chest drain we say mid, mid axillary line but for the needling it's better to go in the anterior axillary line. Uh, remember to extend the uh, uh, arm upwards uh, so it's out of the field. You clean the area quickly. Uh, alcohol swab should be enough for needling. Uh, wear gloves and um, make sure that you are entering the chest. As soon as the venflon goes in, uh, you remove the needle out, the, keep the cannula and connect it through the three-way adapter. Uh, remember that the stopcock uh, direction you can indicate which side is open and accordingly uh, you withdraw the air. You can keep it in uh, to till we repeat the x-ray. You can use a steri strip or a micropore to fix the cannula and uh, keep it straight. When you fix it, don't bend it down because the cannula will obstruct. And once the uh, x-ray is done, if the air leak has drained, you can remove it. If uh, the air leak isn't drained and it's reaccumulating, you can try aspirating once or twice, but if it keeps accumulating, especially if the baby is on mechanical ventilator, you will need a chest drain. Mention this to the family as well and get their consent for the chest drain at the same time. So uh, this is using a butterfly needle and uh, obviously uh, the way it is connected, it's similar, but uh, once the air is aspirated, you have to remove the needle out. The chest drain insertion uh, needs a certain equipment. Uh, as I uh, explained in my video on supportive care, you need to be always ready to manage air leaks in the unit. So make sure your supply kit includes the necessary equipment, the underwater seal, the connectors as needed, the trocar and catheter or the pigtail catheter, whichever you may use. Cleaning agents, uh, a small nick on the skin will be needed if you're using either the trocar or the pigtail uh, because uh, you can't really go through the skin uh, unless you make that nick. You can dilate with the artery forceps to make it easier to dissect through. Uh, the shoulder roll will help us slightly tilt the chest upward. Uh, the direction of the chest drain should be always going anterior. So when you insert the uh, chest drain in, direct it anteriorly. If you're using the artery forceps to direct in, hold it in such a way that the beveled edge is up so that uh, it goes anteriorly. A chest drain going posteriorly is one of the reasons why the lung may compress on it and may not uh, drain subsequently. So this is the uh, fourth uh, intercostal space in the uh, mid clavicular line. You make about 0.5 centimeter small nick. You can widen it uh, with the blunt dissection and you can either go up to the pleural space or you go up to the uh, muscle layer 
widen it a little bit so the insertion itself you don't need to use much force especially on the left side remember that if uh, you are using force you have a chance of going up to the heart uh, so be careful to do this blunt dissection and uh, use the you do not use the trocar if on the left side just a change over to the uh, drain catching on to the uh, artery forceps like it is shown here once a blunt in dissection is done you direct it uh, rotate it upwards so the cannula goes uh, the drain goes upwards anteriorly and uh, you insert it till you hear a pop uh, insert it 2 to 3 centimeter in a premature baby and uh, 3 to 4 centimeter in a term baby uh, better to be on the lower side but uh, keep enough at least 2 centimeter inside so it doesn't pull out uh, this tie is optional if you are going to secure it well but if it's a la the baby with a tension pneumothorax you don't want to risk the drain coming out so a small stitch uh, with the purse string kind of fixing and then the tape on top of it is better um, by the time this is inserted you would have the underwater seal connected if you don't have the underwater seal uh, immediately you can get the hemlick valve to connect uh, or a three-way tap can be connected uh, so this is uh, the pigtail catheter many of you might have used it but uh, it's a mo slightly more expensive but it is gentler uh, there are some units who like it some who don't like it and both systems are okay but again if you are using the trocar uh, remove the needle and use the blunt dissection approach uh, especially if you are on the left side uh, so that there is no risk of uh, puncturing the heart or anything like that in some units it's a pediatric surgeon who inserts a chest drain but in most uh, units and unitology team is uh, privileged to do that and uh, the pigtail catheter uses the kind of seldinger approach uh, so you have a very soft catheter you have the guide wire uh, which uh, goes through that first you uh, make a small nick on the skin then you uh, insert the uh, dilator and then uh, over the dilator the guide wire is threaded in and through the guide wire the pigtail catheter is threaded in it looks complicated but once you start doing it a couple of times it's straightforward the only precaution you have to take is the guide wire is springy and coily so make sure it doesn't contaminate the sterile field the way you hold it uh, you, it's better to have an assistant with you and uh, the underwater seal there are different types a simple water bottle uh, a distilled water uh, containing a bottle with the adapter is adequate in most cases you have one end which is uh, connected to the chest drain set and the other end is either left open to the air or you connect a negative section through that one tip to remember here if you are stopping the negative section you have to remove that uh, tube out otherwise the air cannot come out to the external surface so please uh, remind the team of this so this is how it looks like the uh, chest drain connects to this tubing which is immersed in the water the air bubbles through by immersing it in water you are avoiding a reverse flow of air into the chest so uh, when the negative pressure in the chest increases air can be sucked in through there so you are avoiding that and uh, this is opening either to the exterior or you connect this to a suction the suction should be gentle 5 to 10 uh, millimeter mercury or I mean uh, 5 to 10 uh, suction pressure uh, don't uh, exceed that because it can lead to lung collapse as well and uh, try to stop the suction once the bubbling stops uh, there may be some bubbling continuing as long as you have the suction but once you stop the suction the air leak is encouraged to close so keeping the suction on more than needed is not ideal because it may uh, reduce the healing rate and the first step if you have started suction stop the suction uh, confirm that the baby is stable you don't need a repeat x-ray at this stage you only need to check the baby clinically if any desaturation or rise in oxygen requirement or increased retractions that means that you need to restart the suction and wait more uh, once the suction is stopped successfully you look at clamping the chest drain so clamping the chest drain you, if you have a three-way tap connected you can just close the three-way tap or if you don't have a three-way tap you cl clamp uh, the tube with an artery forceps and once the clamping is done uh, you wait for at least two to four hours some units wait longer uh, and you repeat an x-ray before you actually remove the chest drain as i've mentioned at the beginning the intubation of the baby is not directly linked to this so if your baby is extubatable before that you don't need to keep the baby intubated just because the baby needs a chest drain to stay 
and again removing the mechanical ventilation keeping it on non-invasive mode may actually help uh, the pneumothorax to close uh, and heal quicker so unless the baby is clinically unstable you don't need to continue mechanical ventilation the last few cases with pneumothorax we managed we extubated the baby by uh, 24 hours the chest drain was removed the following day when they were on non-invasive ventilation so just to recap again the negative pressure uh, the chest drain is connected to the underwater seal and you consider adding negative uh, pre suction pressure of minus 5 to minus 10 centimeter of water uh, and you first stop the negative suction then you clamp the drain and you repeat the chest x-ray before you remove uh, if there is worsening clinically even before you do the x-ray you don't need an x-ray you just reopen the drain and wait uh, how long you wait depends on the case. Uh, some cases do get into a bronchopleural fistula stage where you need to be really patient and you have to educate the family that it is going to take time to heal. Uh, once it's removed, you don't really need a stitch, just some steri strips to cover the small wound should be adequate. So remember that pneumothorax causes uh, hypotension in babies and so a cranial ultrasound before discharge, even if it's a term or near term baby, it's better. Uh, in any baby needing intervention. You don't need that in spontaneous pneumothorax or asymptomatic or just needs flow. Uh, hearing assessment is needed, especially if the baby had desaturation or there was a PPHN-like setup. And the outcome is usually good unless there are other concerns. So couple of points about ventilation in such babies. So remember that uh, you don't use a very high peep if there is an air leak. Uh, a general peep of four to five centimeters should be enough. and. Uh, minimize the distending pressure volume guarantee modes may not really work because there is a leak and uh, you cannot assess the leak consistently so try to keep the baby on SIMV with pressure support or if it's difficult ventilation as I said earlier high frequency ventilation uh, can be preferred uh, in these babies use a slightly lower map and increase upward some of these babies with pneumothorax have a lung collapse so you might need the lung recruitment strategy and in these cases don't hold back on the pressure uh, increase the map to a level that is needed and then adjust accordingly and again wean the ventilation as quickly as you can accept the permissive hypercapnia levels and uh, if the baby is uh, not uh, managing very well escalate and seek help as well so uh, i hope uh, this helps and uh, please do share this with your colleagues and friends thank you